Hi, my name's Lauren. And I'm Nick, and we're the owners and designers of this apartment. This apartment building was built in the 1960s. Yeah, and it consists of 15 apartments. We like the, um, I guess, the mid-century vibe of this building, and there were some really kind of redeeming qualities of modernist architecture. When we first found this apartment, it was a one bedroom and we were really looking forward to finding a great one bedroom apartment that we could convert into a two bedroom, which would be user friendly for our family. When we walked in, we straight away noticed the beautiful original brickwork, which has just got the most amazing character and we decided that had to be the key feature to keep. As well as the uh, glazing wall that was part of the kitchen. A lot of these mid-century uh, older buildings from the 60s and 70s that had separate kitchens in the one bedroom apartments and we saw that as a real opportunity. So we decided that we'd try and bring that into a bit more of a modern approach and convert the existing kitchen into a bedroom. So once you walk into the apartment, you immediately walk into the study nook. The way that you're led into the, to the central living core uh, with the angled wall creates like an opening into this space. With the living area, you really are right in the heart of the apartment where your back is to this beautiful brick wall, looking out to this amazing northern and eastern aspect with the natural light. So we designed the curtain to be able to be used with dual purpose. So if someone was working in the office nook, just giving them that extra element of privacy so that the living space can be separate from the office. At the end of the day, and you just want to be lounging around in the living quarters, we can just block the kitchen off so you don't have to look at the dishes and things like that. And as well as, well as a delineation of space, it's also a textual element. It helps acoustically, it also softens visually. It was important for us with the kitchen um, that we integrated all of the appliances. We didn't want the visual distractions of seeing fridges and dishwashers and things like that. It's all integrated into one reasonably compact unit, like a joinery element within almost the living space. We do have a full fridge, a freezer, oven and a dishwasher in there as well. Having a purpose-built dining bench rather than a table and chairs what we saw as important. The dining bench then acts as a secondary sofa. It integrates the meals and the living area as one big lounge room. That design flow was really important to us as well, having that continuity across the spaces. On the existing brick wall where the protruding bricks, we used a brass angle and um, some blocks of plywood where we could create a, um, a movable or adjustable shelving system. With the master bedroom, we um, actually incorporated the bed into the existing built-in row. So what that allowed us to do was create a nook for a queen-size bed while still having enough room at the front of the space for the kids to play on the floor and things like that. We also added in an extra hanging rail for those occasions when we do have more clothing and things to hang up so that we weren't taking up too much floor space. The apartment has floor to ceiling glazing so we wanted to try and maximise the light coming in but also try and add a little element of privacy. So we popped on some perforated steel screens on the bottom glazing and that's really allowed us when we want to put the blinds down to still have privacy but also let filtered light through. It also gave us some security when the children were playing in front of the glass. The original kitchen which we converted into the second bedroom, we've created a raised plinth uh, of plywood storage boxes. In addition to adding uh, additional storage, which is really important in a small space. It also allows the services from the original kitchen to run underneath and connect to the new kitchen. 
It was definitely a really good playground as well for the kids up there. The original glazing, we wanted to try and add an extra layer with having an, a curtain over the top so it could act as an acoustic barrier and also a privacy barrier as well. It would have a more cocooned kind of feel rather than public feel of what the kitchen might have had in the original building. The bathroom is the one room where we decided to do a little bit of a change up and maybe bring in a little bit more modern colours, textures. So we did do a bit of a concrete render over the top of the existing tiles. So we kind of saw this, the bathroom, as like a, a bathing kind of like a cave. vault or a cave. We created a, a little wall hung storage unit out of form ply as well as the vanity and the area where the washing machine kind of lives. We also used black perforated steel in the bathroom just to screen some of the uh, like the visual bulk of a, of a washing machine. The whole fit out is constructed out of a uh, lime washed plywood. We chose this material for a number of reasons, uh, workability, affordability and durability. So you can bang it up, the kids can use it and it's not a precious material which is really important as well. And these amazing old buildings, they're so solid that they really do have so much life to live and we just wanted to breathe some new life into it. Which is really important to us from a sustainability point of view, but also from a point of view of housing affordability and what is considered a livable space for a family. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our Never Too Small channel by clicking on the logo and the notification bell to receive updates on our latest episode.